for severe thunderstorms now look likely in the next several hours. We'll look at the threats and who is going to see the worst of it coming up. Karen. All right, Ben, first at four, a rushed meeting at the state capitol in the name of coronavirus safety. My Governor Whitmer is concerned they might have to do it all over again. Plus, a report of virus discrimination, why many Michiganders might feel sympathy for this couple from New York. It's all first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. And good Tuesday afternoon to you. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, it is going to be one of those nights when we are watching the radar very closely. The threat of severe storms just picked up today. Let's get right over to Ben Bailey working inside our weather office today. Where do things stand, Ben? Yeah, Karen, this is the one thing we didn't want to see is the sunshine that's starting to emerge in the west and south zones right now. We're seeing temperatures close to 70, and that is not good. That's one of the reasons that this severe risk has gone to enhanced for most of the area. So as we take a look at that graphic, you can see that's just about everybody west, south, and half of the metro zone, and then things start to decrease as far as that severe risk goes a little bit further to the north. There's nothing out there right now on 4 Live Radar. We expect these thunderstorms to start popping around 6 p.m in the north and west sections of the area. So if you're up around Genesee County, northern parts of the area, you'll start seeing some cells pop, and then that becomes more of a line towards 11 o'clock. One inch hail, 70 mile per hour sustained winds, and the possibility of an isolated tornado. It's all on the plate for this setup, and the strongest storms will be south and west. We'll talk more about what you can do to prepare right now and look more in depth at this threat in just a few minutes, Karen. All right, we'll check back with you in just a few moments. Now, the coronavirus. We will talk about the new numbers of infections and the new action from the state legislature. Here's what you need to know today. Detroit's Mayor Duggan just told reporters he is seeing signs social distancing is working in the city, but everyone needs to keep staying home and staying away from each other. Statewide, Michigan is reporting nearly 19,000 infections. Sadly, the family and friends of 845 people are now mourning the loss of loved ones. The big news today comes from Lansing, where state lawmakers gathered for the first time in weeks to extend an emergency declaration. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom with a vote and reaction. Yeah. Kim. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Uh, this was a very unusual meeting of a state legislature. Today, our Rod Maloney called the mood, quote, social distancing on steroids. Lawmakers, as you said, had the Constitution uh, requires them to meet at the Capitol to extend the current emergency declaration, which was about to run out. Many lawmakers didn't show up, though. The state Senate had the bare minimum of 20 members for a quorum. There were plenty of masks, rubber gloves, and hand sanitizer as they met, as you can imagine. Uh, the House and Senate passed a resolution extending the emergency declaration by 23 days. The Senate was in and out in about 13 minutes. The governor wanted 70 more days into June. She's worried lawmakers will have to come back again if this crisis continues. Listen. This is really necessary to give protections to our frontline workers. They will still have those protections, but now the legislature will have to come back in in a few weeks, which could be at the height of the crisis in Michigan. And it's contrary to all of the advice from our medical, uh, you know, the brilliant medical people that are counseling us and, and on the front lines. Today was the right call by the legislature to extend this to April 30th instead of the end of June, as the governor had requested. And we need to continue evaluating this on a weekly basis to ensure we can keep people safe in our state and get the economy moving again. The emergency declaration is the legal support for about 30 executive orders the governor has issued, including her stay at home order. That remains in effect until April 13th, which is next Monday. Absolutely nothing changes until then. And the governor says she'll make a decision on extending that order coming up in the next few days. Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Sure. And if you are like most people following the advice to wear that mask in public, some of you could be facing a challenge that comes with wearing a mask and your glasses. So how do you keep your glasses from fogging up? Dr. McGeorge has some solutions. Healthcare workers are used to dealing with this and everyone has their own favorite solution. First off though, the biggest reason that your glasses fog up is that they're cold, especially when you come in from outside and your warm, moist breath blows upward, fogging the lenses. So the simplest solution to that is just to have a second warm pair handy in an inner pocket that you can switch to. Now, hopefully this is only going to be an issue for another couple of weeks until the weather warms up. Now, if you do have a regular mask like this, the easiest thing to do is just to pinch the little metal nose bridge so that it fits better and it doesn't allow air to blow up to your glasses. 
Now, if you are particularly crafty and you made your own mask, you can sew a paper clip into the nose bridge that can be form fitted to your nose and cheekbones to limit fogging. Now, what if you are not especially crafty and you actually made your mask with the Surgeon General's instructions like this one here, where the rubber bands around your ears do not make a tight fit up here at all? Well, one easy solution is to actually take a piece of Kleenex and accordion fold it so that it can fit into the space at the top of the mask where air can blow upward. That'll help keep air from blowing into your eyeglasses. Now finally, one last thing that you can try is you can try treating the actual glass themselves. Some people have had success with soap and water. Some people have tried rain -X. I have never actually tried any of these, but it might be worth a try. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Doc. Now, more support for frontline workers. Little Caesars just kicked off a donation campaign of one million pizzas for healthcare workers and first responders all across the country. The first drop? Off was 600 pizzas at the DMC. You can get involved in donating by using the Little Caesars app. Forgotten Harvest is also giving out food to families in need. This was over at Romulus High School. The food being distributed to Romulus Community School District families. Wayne County Executive Warren Evans partnered with Forgotten Harvest to put on the food drive. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson remains in the intensive care unit right now fighting coronavirus. Right now, not exactly clear who is in charge of the country as Britain's constitution does not spell out what happens if the prime minister can't do his job. The country's lockdown needs to be reviewed by next week and British officials are hoping Johnson will be back at his desk by then. Of course, we'll keep you posted. We're also tracking coronavirus stories from other countries around the world. In Spain, health officials are downplaying a spike in the reports of coronavirus deaths. We told you deaths had been decreasing, but 740 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours. That was the first increase in five days. Government spokesperson says the figures reflect an adjustment of weekend data, so it's not a true setback. Country is now in its fourth week of a national shutdown. Ukraine just launched a lockdown, which sparked some confrontations with police. People were trying to get into a popular water park in the capital, and police tried to stop them. Some of the crowd argue the restrictions violate the freedom of movement, leading to scuffles. As of Sunday, Ukraine had reported 38 deaths from coronavirus and 1,300 confirmed cases. Reports of a sick tiger at the Bronx Zoo in New York are having an impact all around the world. Work crews were spreading disinfectant at major zoos in India. Zoo workers are wearing protective gear and have been told not to touch animals. It's believed the tiger in New York contracted the virus from an asymptomatic zoo worker. We've seen what COVID-19 is doing to hospitals and healthcare providers. Imagine you're the family of a sick child away from home and even more isolated at the Ronald McDonald House. It's a place where families have safe shelter and healing. As Paula Tutman reports, the charity remains open under great duress, sprinkled with small victories. I see you walk this, you try to run. These are special, precious moments. She try to run so bad. The big sister of a sick infant as she turns into a toddler. There's great joy at the Ronald McDonald House in Detroit, but also great uncertainty as families are trying to heal themselves while their children receive vital medical care. But it's different now. COVID-19 has taken away a vital kind of medicine, togetherness. You know, those families are together in the dining room talking. That's part of our mission is keeping those families together. They're all going through the same thing and now everybody's separate. For the Irvin Walker family of Taylor, they've had to weather COVID-19 inside this safe cocoon with their faces somewhat pressed against the window, watching the world change outside. Hannah was a server when she went into labor 10 weeks early. And while she could return to work now, her work is no longer there. The restaurants are all shut down right now. There is takeout, um, <laughs> but um, like it's not enough. Two month old Alani had a setback last night. It means 10 more days. But the hospital itself has a one visitor policy at a time. So yeah. me and dad are the only two people that are allowed to visit visit Alani, but we're not allowed to be at her bedside at the same time. And that's really hard because kids need their parents um, together. I have to wear a mask, so I can't even kiss my own child because the whole time I'm with her, I have to wear a mask. And it's just so different from when she was born two months ago that I could hold her and I could 
kiss her and I could do whatever I wanted. I could talk to people and it's just, that's not the case anymore. Think about all the volunteers that have signed up to make meals for the families. We are usually six, seven months out with families or uh, uh, donors wanting to come in to feed the families. Meal. All of that had to come to a standstill. It's an interesting snapshot how small our world has become, but we stayed open and we stayed open for those families and we're doing the best we can to take good care of them. What the Ronald McDonald House really needs is for people to remember that they are there, that they are wrapping their arms around these families from a safe distance, of course. Paula Tutman, Local 4. The Ronald McDonald House is raising money to feed its visiting families and is also in need of many non-perishables like paper towels and other items, but we're told they do have toilet paper. Still ahead, first at four, we're going to talk about boosting girl power around the country. The one thing you can do today to show fellow women and girls your support. Also, coronavirus fears in the presidential race. We're tracking voter turnout in Wisconsin, and we're hearing about longer lines in one city in particular. The dark side of the pandemic, this couple was minding their own business when someone shoved a nasty note at them. We'll show you. First, let's stay positive, honoring our frontline workers. Oh, 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 oh,